It's early in the morning and we are working on a Nissan Micra, a K12 this time. Still a little bit dark, but um, we can see enough to know what we're doing. And what we're going to be doing on this car here is changing the exhaust. Um, so we will jump right into it. I'll show you underneath. We've already jacked it up. I've got it on the front here. Sadly, the fog kind of ruins the... Uh, the effect here but essentially I've got it on I've got it on some um, ramps at the front and I've just put my axle stands at the back and now we'll jump underneath and I'll show you where the bolts are this is the front of the exhaust have these two bolts here held in by springs they go up into the catalytic converter and they will be we're doing a complete exhaust today so they will be coming off give those little spritz of the good stuff Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're out. There we go, that's more like it. There we go, give all these little good spray down. So those are the first bolts to do. We're gonna have to undo this oxygen sensor just here. Um, there's the sensor there, and then the clip for the electrical connector is up here by the oil filter. So we've got two bolts here, both 14s for the down pipe. Okay, let's try and spray these first just to get a little bit out. There we go. That was the bracket that we did just there. There we go. So we sprayed these two nuts here and then these two here are for the exhaust mount themselves. Okay, so just over the rear beam, you can see the bolts, or studs and nut rather, for the clamp that hold on the rear silencer. There we go. Give that a good soak. And now just let all of that soak for a while, and then we'll come back and heat up the engine a little bit, and then we'll start breaking these loose. So I've bought my uh, Clarius exhaust, and if you're curious about part numbers, that is the part number for the bolt that bolts the downpipe to the manifold slash cat. That is the part number for the uh, exhaust hangers for the rear. This is the part number for an exhaust seal. This is the part number for the springs that go with the bolts for the front downpipe to the manifold cat area. This is the part number for an exhaust seal. This is the... Whoops. This is the part number for the clamp for the centre pipe to the back box, rear silencer, whatever you want to call it. This is the part number for the rear silencer and back box. This is the part number for the rear, uh, for the rear, for the for the uh, middle silencer and the uh, centre pipe. This is the part number for the front pipe that bolts up to the bottom of the catalytic converter. So we're just going to warm up the engine a little bit to get the exhaust kind of hot just to make the bolts come out a little bit easier um, so just be careful that it will be hot and then we will need a 21 mil spanner like this to undo the oxygen sensor and we are going to need um, a 14, a 12 and a 13 millimeter socket to be able to undo the rest of the exhaust not too difficult so let's get into it so this is pretty much the reason why I've decided to uh, film this job it's just that when you go to take off some of the downpipe bolts they're just so rusty that they just snap off uh, so I'll go underneath and I'll show you where this bolt came from originally and where the other half is ok so this is where the bolt snapped off was and as you can see the other one rather irritatingly is coming out fine It would have been great if they both came out fine, but uh, never mind. One is good, we'll take it. Let's 
kind of a shape. Really, these were really the only two bolts we needed to come out nicely. The rest of the bolts we could have dealt with, whatever, because we could have just cut the exhaust. But with these two here, it's a little bit more, a little bit more complicated. Stud remover onto our broken stud. This is either where having an impact gun is going to save me or whether I'm just going to fail. We'll see. Instant fail. Okay. That is properly stuck in there. Which is kind of a shame. So we're going to have to try and break it loose up top first. And then hopefully we'll be able to get it the rest of the way out. Please come out. Just smashed over a little female torques. Nope. Just sheared that straight off as well. Brilliant. That's gonna be one of those. I can sense it. Okay, let's try this. So what I've done here is, I've got a female Torx, which is pretty good for smashing over, um, you know, circular bolts or anything that's stripped, just because it, it really digs into it. I've put in my half inch drive, so I can get some real torque on it. And um, as you can see here, it's properly rusted in place. So now that we've got that in there, it snapped off before. But I'm relatively confident now we'll be able to get it loose. Okay. Come on. There we go. It's turning. Oh, there we go. Wow, can't believe that. So with this one here, once it's broken loose, you can see that comes out really easily, which is nice. You can see how much rust was around that, around that bolt there threads are actually pretty clean so it's just the, the end of the end of the bolt itself that was like properly stuck on there and this is why warming up the exhaust is really important I know you can't see it from here but this exhaust is like nicely warmed up and that is the thing that makes the difference here if your exhaust is like stone cold you don't stand a chance of getting these bolts out you do not stand a chance they will probably almost well I say probably almost definitely I would suspect them of snapping off that's why I always heat up the car to operating temperature yes you have to work around a hot exhaust but it's definitely worth working around a hot exhaust to get the bolts out um, if you're careful then it is to snap off every single bolt so you can see here this is the bolt that snapped off and you can see the like smashing this socket over the end really mushrooms it wedges it in there nice and tight which enables us to undo it thankfully this is essentially the socket that I used to smash over the end of it. You can see that it has like a slight star shape to it. And uh, what that does, the, the ridges in it, on the end of this snapped off bolt here, you can see that it will cut a nice groove into the side. You do really have to hammer it on. But once you've hammered it on, it essentially creates a new nice bolt head so you can get enough torque to uh, break the bolt loose and the reason why this bolt here was stuck was was just because of this head here just so rusted on place that it was just no never going to come loose on its own especially when it was cold because you can see here the threads are actually perfectly clean so funnily enough it wasn't the uh, rusty threads that were the problem it was it was just the fact that there had been so much rust accumulated around the head to break it loose and you saw that once I did break it loose, it came out really, really easily. If you are going to struggle with anything, it will be this bolt here on the downpipe to the catalytic converter. Okay. That will do. Now that we've got the 
spanner seated nicely. Just want to break that loose. Wow. The likelihood is that yours will not come loose as easily as mine did. Once you get it moving, you're essentially away. Just keep it moving and get it out of the exhaust. Well, I just cannot unclip. I just cannot unclip the Zoe 2 sensor. So I'm just going to remove this bracket here. Well, I confess I did struggle to take off the O2 sensor and what I did in the end was, as you saw, take off that 13mm that holds it onto the, to the um, block and then I just unclipped this connector using a pick. It is uh, one of these little bayonet clips here, as you can see it clips onto that dowel at the back, which should help you to uh, release it. Anyway, what you really want to do is just have it totally loose like this so it's easier to screw back in when you put the new exhaust on. So I'm just going to set this to one side. Okay, so we need to release this intermediate mount here. Just held on by a couple of 13 mils. Okay, let's see if we can get this spanner on here. These bolts here are usually easy come loose didn't usually take too much that one there didn't take much at all did it yeah these ones here don't usually take much so this back so the rear silencer is held on by this little clamp here, which has these two nuts on it. So I've already undone that and just slid it out of the way down here, which now means the whole exhaust is loose. There we go. That's just fallen off there. So we are essentially on just one, just a few hangers here at the back, which we'll get off with our which we'll get off with our pry bar, you can essentially see this is what we're dealing with um, it's very very simple this just needs to pull off um, simple as that there's no bolts or anything you just need to use some brute force and maybe a little bit of WD-40 once it's out it should look something like that You don't pull it out all in one piece, I've just reassembled it to um, essentially show you what it looks like. Uh, you've got your rear silencer, then you've got your centre pipe with your si um, yeah, rear silencer, and then you've got your resonator in the middle there with your centre pipe, and then you've got your front pipe, and then this is the one that has the O2 sensor in it, just here. And it also has this horrific mount. I hate this design so much. I couldn't actually buy a new one, so I'm going to reuse this old one. And that's essentially it. So what you want to do is before you reinstall your O2 sensor, you just want to put a smidge of copper grease in the threads. Just in case if you ever need to take this bad boy out again, you will not regret doing this. And this is the reason why I wanted to unplug it, is because obviously that uh, the uh, pigtail just goes all over the place. And now, we'll now we'll bolt this up to here and we'll put our gasket inside here. Get our new gasket around there. We want to meet up our old fire exhaust. And we want to get our which can be a bit of a, a bit of a trying task with one arm. So with our gasket in place we just want to start putting these in finger tight just hold everything in place try and give these a little bit of a turn just 
just hold everything in good and snug. There we go, and we've got obviously got off. And we have our O2 sensor here installed, it's not plugged in yet, but we'll get to that. What we want to do first is we want to make sure that the exhaust is bolted in the right location. We'll get all the bolts started finger tight, make sure the exhaust is in the right place, then we'll tighten them all down. So you just want to get those bolts there started to the centre pipe. Don't worry about the fact that it's not connected to anything right now, that will come. Um, it will just be resting on the rear beam or it, you know, if it's just a little bit too short it might slightly fall on the floor. But um, this, is, this is a good position right now so I'm just going to leave it where it is and now we will put on the back box with its new hangers and then we'll connect up this clamp. We'll do that finger tight as well and then we'll go through the whole exhaust, make sure it's properly aligned and then we'll snug everything down at the same time. Now once the back box is in, we just need to get this aligned basically, just in there. And then snug everything down. Naturally, don't forget to plug back in the O2 sensor and uh, bolt that back onto the block before you start it up. That's essentially it now. So the exhaust is completely on. Um, so we're gonna fire it up now and listen for any leaks. I like to tighten everything down relatively loosely because um, uh, I prefer to snug it down to stop any leaks rather than over tighten stuff. So there may be a leak or two. Just check that's in neutral. We'll find out. Sounds good. We'll just go underneath again and uh, just double check that there's no leaks anywhere. <laughs> 